Well, this past Sunday, for the first time in a little while, parts of western New York were under a wind advisory. That means forecasters were expecting wind gusts that could have reached 50 miles per hour. Now, while the wind didn't get quite that strong, the deeper we go into the cold season, yeah, I said it, the more likely these widespread wind events are going to become. So why do we see these seasonal changes in wind speed and intensity? That's what's up on this week's edition of Heather's Weather Wise. Let's start off with a couple words that help describe different types of wind that we're going to be talking about. The winds that we had Sunday night into Monday are what we call synoptic scale winds. They're driven by weather systems that pass through any given area. They tend to be a little bit more widespread. Now take a thunderstorm wind gust. That tends to be a lot more intense, but a lot more isolated. We call thunderstorm winds or winds produced by snow squalls in the wintertime mesoscale winds. I could spend a whole lot of time talking about that second option, but let's focus on that synoptic wind, the widespread stuff, to at least get a general sense for how things work. In general, a synoptic wind is going to be driven by the same process, whether it's a light afternoon breeze or a ripping gale, because all wind in any form is, is air moving from high to low pressure. Take, for example, your favorite beverage. If it's carbonated and it comes in a bottle or a can just like this, the air inside has much higher pressure than the air outside. So when you go to open it, you get that nice fizzing sound as all the air rapidly escapes and you get the bubbles that start to build up as well. Now let's say I take Patrick Hammer's drink here, give it a good shake, activate the carbonation, go to open it, and well, you know what's going to happen. Let's focus on areas of high and low pressure since that's what drives the wind. Basically, a stronger high or a stronger low is going to create a bigger pressure difference and that's going to create a stronger wind flow. During the summer months, areas of low pressure tend to be a little bit weaker because we don't really have any big temperature differences across the country. It's warm just about everywhere most of the time. Now contrast that as we go into the colder season. We typically have these waves of warm and cold air that often clash, and that's what these areas of low pressure feed on. So if you've got a bigger temperature difference, you're likely going to get a stronger low, and if you have a stronger low pressure system, you're likely going to get some stronger winds. That's why it tends to be relatively calm around here in the summer, and on a humid day, it can even be stifling without a breeze. But as we go through February and March, that's also why it can get so darn windy around here too. Of course, Lake Erie is going to be a local contributor to wind speed as well. A wind coming right off the water is almost always going to be moving faster than wind farther inland. The reason? Friction. Over Lake Erie, there's not as much of it, so the air is able to move faster. But as soon as you move into the southern tier, especially where it's hilly, where there's lots of trees, where there's buildings to slow the wind down, the air is going to be moving a lot slower. So you get those great differences in wind speed, and oftentimes we get our strongest winds along parts of the Chautauqua Ridge. Here's a viewer question that Sandy sent to me last week, and I found it pretty interesting. She wanted to know if there was a reason that there seems to be stronger winds in the afternoon especially in the summertime, compared to the morning or the evening. There's a pretty simple way to answer that as well, and it's what we call atmospheric mixing. Here's an hour-by-hour -hour step for a typical clear summer day. Right around sunrise, there may be just a little bit of a breeze, but not a whole lot of rising air just yet. Once the sun comes up, the air at the surface starts to warm up, and some of that air starts to rise. Up around 5,000 feet or so, there's usually a corridor of some relatively stronger winds. You see, this rising air can't just keep rising forever. There has to be some air on the other side that eventually sinks to replace the air that already rose. Sometimes, if we get enough sinking air, we can get some of those winds from about 5,000 feet to get a little bit closer to the surface, and that helps to build up the breeze just a little bit by the time we get to the afternoon and early evening. Once the sun sets, things start to settle out once again, and the winds die down for the evening. Thanks for sending me that question on Twitter, Sandy. And remember, anytime you have a question that you'd like answered about our weather here in Western New York or anywhere in the country, you can send them to me at any of those social media platforms. If you do happen to miss an episode, you can just go to the WGRZ YouTube page. I have my own Heather's WeatherWise playlist where each episode appears. You can go back and watch them as many times as you'd like. Well, I'll see you next week. But until then, remember, it's good to be a geek.